Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? China, da? P. Diddy or, nah, P. Did it. Uh, Lego Head Fiasco and Full Zombie. <laughs> Sigma Tiger, all up in your grill. What do we got today? The hottest fire on the go. Check it out. China, da. Well, what the heck is that? Well, it's Canada becoming communist, is basically. So Toronto's overlords pondering implementation of a rain tax. The city of Toronto plans to consult with water users in April about taxing based on the amount of hard surfaces on a property. Get out of here. What are you talking about? Toronto Mayor Olivia Chow... Seriously, they want to tax the rain. Let's dive right in here. Before we get started on the latest insanity to um, seep out of Toronto's municipal government, let's give credit where credit is due, shall we? For sheer gall, for its bottomless, brazen brassiness, you can't beat this one, a tax on rain. You almost have to admire the Bolsheviks who presently run Canada's largest city for their inventiveness and their total indifference to the taxpayer. Almost. And let's make one thing clear. We are not making this up. Virginia, Toronto, stands. Toronto stands. <laughs> Commissars have even issued a call for people to participate in what they call, benignly, a storm water charge, a water service charge consultation. Okay. Here's a few gems from their call for a consultation. Get your smelling salts ready. The City of Toronto is consulting with water users and interested parties on the possible implementation of a storm water charge, they write, neglecting to mention that water users are all sentient beings living within the confines of Gulag TDOT. Yeah, just like a, uh, uh, a person who gives birth or a, uh, what was it? The, the lactating female now is, is called a, a, I don't even know, it's stupid. So anyway... Uh, in the, uh, the guise of inclusion, uh, we must remove English words so we don't hurt anybody's feelings. So, uh, water users, not, you know, regular everybody in town, a stormwater charge for all property classes, meaning everyone will ultimately pay for the invasive wet stuff. Why? Well, just because. Also, these pesky raindrops don't just soak into the grass and plant life, which, last time we checked, is arguably a good thing. They sometimes dribble off into the sewers, which, you know were built to accommodate water that occasionally falls from the sky, but never mind. Here in the six, the Union of Soviet Toronto Republics, all that is now considered a bad thing, writes the uh, Politburo, stormwater is rain and melted snow. When not absorbed into the ground, stormwater runs off hard surfaces on streets, down storm drains through a network of pipes that carry it into local waterways. Too much stormwater can overwhelm the city's sewer system, uh, which can lead to flooded basements and impacts the surface water quality in Toronto River, streams, and Lake Ontario's waterfront. So basically, instead of them... Uh, implementing better infrastructure to remove the water, they're going to go ahead and tax you for the amount of hard services you have. If the water can't absorb, then you will pay. Way to go, Toronto. Secret RCMP report warns of paranoid populism coming to Canada. All right, well, let's dive in. The RCMP is warning the federal government about potential civil unrest coming to Canada when Canadians realize just how bleak their future economic situations are. The warning comes in a report designated as Special Operational Information, read only by RCMP officers and for the eyes of political decision makers within the federal government. A law professor at British Columbia's Thompson Rivers University, Matt Malone, filed an access to information request and received a heavily redacted version of the report, which he published online. The coming period of recession will accelerate the decline in living standards that the younger generations have already witnessed compared to earlier generations, reads the report titled Whole of Government Five-Year Trends for Canada. For example, many Canadians under 35 are unlikely to ever be able to buy a place to live. Yeah, absolutely. When rent is like $3,000 and you can buy like a single dwelling home for $2.5 million in Minnesota, Duluth, Minnesota, what's going on? Uh, yeah, well, houses in Toronto and Vancouver are like, you know, a house that has a wet basement and it's a million-dollar house. It's insane. 
Uh, if you guys want to buy something affordable, try Newfoundland. You can buy uh, what would be considered a million dollar house for uh, like 350 grand. The report was described as a scanning exercise based on open source information from a four month period in 2022 to highlight trends in Canada's international and internationally that could have a significant effect on the Canadian government and the RCMP. The introduction to the report paints a dismal picture of Canada's short term future. The global community has experienced a series of crises with COVID-19, supply chain issues, and the Russian invasion of Ukraine all sending shockwaves throughout the world, reads the introduction. The situation will probably deteriorate further in the next five years as the early effects of climate change and a global recession add their weight to the ongoing crises. Recent experience has raised uh, the important question of how adaptable and ready RCMP federal policing is to new and unexpected crises, like the honking, which uh, they obviously did such a great job there and shut down people's bank accounts and uh, arrested people for peacefully protesting and making noise. And now what's going on with all the Palestinian supporters making noise? No boots on their necks. The global output of a variety of commodities causing greater scarcity in developed countries. The report quotes French President Emmanuel Macron as having said, We are about to see the end of abundance. Among the coming climate catastrophes, it warns of like flooding and wildfires. Report notes Canada will also face increasing pressures to cede Arctic territory. To whom? Perhaps Russia, obviously. Um, or go to war. Emergency, and we don't have any army. We don't have any ammunition. We're down like 10% on recruits. Uh, the fleet of uh, aircraft and uh, sea craft are all deteriorating. And then we have extreme weather crises, such as these wildfires that have uh, been growing in numbers because they're not doing as many controlled burns. And guess what? If you don't control the forest with controlled burns, then the whole thing will light up. According to the report, authoritarian movements have been on the rise in many liberal democratic nations as populists have been capitalizing on the rise of political polarization and conspiracy theories, which allow them to tailor their message to extremist movements. And basically, uh, if you're conservative, you are considered uh, extreme. You'll always be labeled a right-wing right or right-leaning extremist uh, if you're conservative, because that's what liberals do. They go ahead and just label you with the worst possible thing ever. And uh, they're the ones actually doing it. Let's move on. Ron DeSantis signs a bill requiring parental consent for kids under 16 to hold social media accounts. Oh no. Well, what happens if you're under 16 and you want to get on Facebook? Well, you got to ask your mom and dad, is it okay if I have a social media account? And they'll say, mm, maybe. Most of them will say yes. So what's the big deal? The big deal, if you're under uh, 14, you're not allowed whatsoever. Uh, so Ron DeSantis just signed a new law, HB3, a bill that will give parents and teens under 16 more control over the kids' access to social media and require age verifications from many websites good these are children okay children shouldn't be allowed to go do what they want or else go ahead and let them buy ciggies and whiskey and let them uh, go ahead and get a job at 14 and do whatever they want because if you're going to go ahead and let them decide what's best for them then why not say uh yeah you're gonna have to pay rent sir you're gonna have to pay some money if you want to live here Knowing a reckless violation could be considered an unfair or deceptive trade practice subject up to 50,000 civil penalties for violation. So basically, they're going to uh, jack you up with fines if they find you've allowed children onto the website and uh, there's any potentially harmful material. So yeah, there you go. Good job, Florida. Uh, Diddy's LA and Miami homes raided by federal agents as part of a sex trafficking probe report says. Well, what's going on here? P. Diddy. Mr. Combs, Puff Daddy, uh, well, yeah, he's been uh, he's been in trouble. Sean Combs, he's had uh, allegations of sexual uh, assault, sexual abuse, and that he settled out of court. And now, based off of uh, that information, the federales have come in and started investigating. The raid was made by Homeland Security Investigations in the Holmby Hills area of Los Angeles, with federal agents pictured coming into the home with boxes and bags of evidence. <laughs> a Miami home owned by record label boss Diddy, real name Sean Combs, was also raided Monday as part of the same operation, federal sources confirmed. Uh-oh, so it's not looking good for P. Diddy, because P. did it, I imagine, uh, the allegations, if you were able to read them. We read one of them on uh, a previous show, and it was horrific how uh, the woman described uh, Puff Daddy and his uh, security just totally uh, taking away her innocence. 
They also claim that uh, there would be further raids and houses associated with Mogul in New York and Chicago. So where's P. Diddy? He certainly wasn't there. You want to know where he is? Uh, well, his Love Air private jet tracked amid raids down on Caribbean Island. Well, what could he be doing down there? Well, there's a place called Cape Verde, and they don't have extradition. Okay, uh, if you want, you can actually go ahead and type it in, globe.adsbexchange.com, and uh, put in his little ticker, 1820B, I think it is, and uh, you can follow his flight path, and you can see he flew from uh, California, Los Angeles, LAX, all the way down to Antigua. No... Uh, no certainty that he's going to Cape Verde, but that's what a lot of people are predicting. So what's the deal? Uh, they tracked Diddy's personal love aircraft, uh, the well-known Black Gulf Stream 5 that Diddy has flaunted and flown for years now. And it looks like the aircraft is currently on the ground in Antigua, which is down in the Caribbean. And there he is, just thick. Uh, based on the flight activity viewed by TMZ, Diddy's jet has been up and down California between Sunday and Monday, taking off from Sacramento Executive Airport Sunday evening and landing in Palm Springs International Airport in about an hour later. An hour after that, took off from Palm Springs yet again, landed in Van Nuys, and uh, then 30 minutes later, uh, jet took off from Van Nuys and landed at some point in Antigua. So his carbon footprint on uh, Saturday and Sunday and Monday is absolutely insane, kind of like Justin Trudeau there flying around. The only thing that remains unanswered is whether Diddy is on the plane. We don't have any evidence he is at this point. Well, you could get the flight manifesto and find it pretty quick. So anyway, there it is. We'll keep you posted on uh, Diddy on the loose. He did it. Uh, Lego instructs California Police Department to stop using Lego heads to, to mask identities of suspects. Obviously, what were they thinking? Imagine using Ronald McDonald's face. And then McDonald's coming and say, what are you doing putting the face of our spokesperson on criminals? Ha <laughs> ha, it's a joke. No, you guys are fools. This is uh, intellectual property. So obviously some young fool... Uh, decided this would be funny and started doing it and either nobody noticed or someone else uh, was incompetent as well. The Murrieta Police Department in California has been instructed by Lego to stop digitally adding Lego heads onto photos of suspects according to recent report. Murrieta Police Department Lieutenant Jeremy Durant told Fox News Digital in a statement that the Lego group requested that it stop using Lego heads in their social media posts. Lego group reached out to us and respectfully asked us to refrain from using their intellectual property in our social media content, which of course we understand and will comply with. We are currently exploring other methods of continuing to publish our content in a way that is engaging and interesting to our followers. Yeah, just use a, a smiley face. Um, is that thing intellectual property? Proper, probably. We'll just get your kid to draw a circle and take a picture of it and crop it and then use that. There you go. That's your intellectual property. Anyway, uh, on January 1st, a new law went into effect that restricts the how and when law enforcement agencies in California share suspect photos and mugshots. Yeah, because we don't want to hurt the criminal's feelings. Innocent until proven uh, guilty. Fair enough. To live past 100, mangia a lot less. Italian experts' ideas on aging. Well, it's also the tiger's idea as well. We talked about this. There's that super rich dude who spends like $2 million a year popping pills and doing all kinds of exercises, oxygen, uh, breathing techniques, and whatever. And uh, he looks worse than he did 10 years ago. So, you know, he was 30. Now he's 40. He looks 50. So is it working? No. The only way I personally felt, I was like, you know, if we're like a machine, right, a car, and we're going to drive that car 100 miles a day, then eventually it's going to wear out. But if we drive it one mile a day, it should last 100 times longer, theoretically. Well, same with your body. You put food in in the morning, it begins to digest. You put more in at uh, afternoon time, it hasn't even begun to finish digesting, and you're putting more in to digest, so your body's working. And then you get supper or even an afternoon snack. Boom, boom. And then an evening snack before bed. And your body has been digesting the entire day. And now overnight when it's meant to rest, it is going to continue to digest. So your body's being overworked. Kidney, liver, all your major organs. Okay? So that's my idea. Don't exercise too much and uh, don't eat too much. That's what fasting is all about. Break fast. You know, some people have to, have to eat in the mornings. Well, guess what? It's not true. Spend three days not eating until lunch, and guess what? You're not hungry anymore in the mornings. Your body will adapt. Literally 38 hours after you stop eating, your body is entered into autophagy, usually around 17 hours. And that's when your body starts to repair itself because it's not working. What do I do? I'm going to fix all the problems. Well, at around 38 hours, your body realizes, I haven't received any sugar. 
or carbohydrates. What am I going to do? I'm going to look for it in my body, places I've stored it before, belly fat, leg fat, butt fat, all that fat. That's what it does. It's called ketosis. And uh, these uh, Italian researchers believe that if you eat less, then you will have uh, a longer life. Almost nobody in Italy eats the Mediterranean diet, which is super healthy for your heart. High fat diet, olives, uh, leafy greens, tomatoes. California, manner and Italian accent, he added that many Italian children, especially in the country's south, are obese, bloated on what he calls the poisonous five Ps. Pizza, pasta, protein, potatoes, and pane. Bread. Absolutely. Carbohydrates. And if you have too many of them, what does your body do? It's going to turn them into sugar. And it's going to store them as fat because it can't burn them. And there it is. The five Ps. Stay it off. Like, you know, humble yourself. Don't be a pig. New Harvard Harris Poll, 73% of voters are fine with the term illegal immigrant. Of course they are. Just like they're fine with any term that makes sense. Okay? 73% of voters believe it is appropriate to refer to those who enter the U.S. without permission as illegal immigrants. 68% believe it is appropriate to refer to them as undocumented immigrants. 63% of voters have heard of the story of murder Georgia nursing student Lake and Riley, God rest her soul, and 70% believe the case shows that the U.S. needs stricter immigration policies. There you have it. And... Here we have it. Exclusive illegal immigrant charge in shooting death of Grand Rapids woman. Brandon Ortiz Vite faces one count each of homicide, open murder, carjacking, felony firearm, operating while intoxicated, driving on a suspended or revoked license. In a lot of these cases that these immigrants, illegal immigrants getting caught, they're drunk, driving around. They don't care. They don't care about anyone's safety, not even their own. They're dirty, rotten, filthy individuals, okay? That's it. Filthy, rotten individuals, demonized to a point where they literally will kill people. Uh, California man appears to go full zombie, walking around, biting a human leg. What are you talking about? Good lord. Graphic video. If you want to check it out, it's on TMZ. California man is competing with a Florida man for weirdest headline of the week. Cause he got arrested for walking around apparently chomping on a human severed leg. The dude's name is Rosendo Tellez and he got busted Friday out near Bakersfield in a small town called Wasco after eyewitnesses saw him strolling through the town with what looked to be an entire limb that was attached to a person just earlier that day. Kern County officials said the leg was illegally taken from the scene of a train accident that morning when Tellez is alleged to have swooped it up after a man was hit and killed at the Amtrak station in town. Not too long after, citizens say they spotted Tellez holding it. Some even claimed to Fox 26 News that Tellez was taking bites out of the leg, which seemed to be the case based on the video of the guy that's circulating on the internet. It's a gruesome sight, as you can see the flesh dangling from the chopped off leg, and sure enough, you can also see this man identified as Tellez seemingly going in for a nibble. Tellez was eventually intercepted by sheriff's deputies, and he was reportedly arrested without incident. He was booked on several charges, including outstanding warrants, possession of drug paraphernalia, and for removal of human remains from a location other than a cemetery. If you are curious, that's considered a misdemeanor in California. Yeah, he's got a hearing on Tuesday to address all this stuff, uh, and he's still in custody right now, so don't worry. Uh, mass casualty event in Baltimore. If you've been asleep uh, ever since yesterday, then you have no idea what's going on. Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed after giant ship slams into a pillar. And uh, yeah, basically it lost propulsion. They took off from the marine dock and they were just going and they were like, uh, yeah, we don't have any propulsion on this thing. We can't move forward. We can't turn. What's going on? Well, it uh, rammed into a bridge in its support zone. Let's have a look. Just ridiculous. Just totally collapsed. Devastating. Absolutely devastating. Uh, and in other news of destruction, guess what? Al Gore, please pick up the red emergency phone because a hailstorm in Texas yesterday destroyed thousands of acres of solar farms. Not just thousand panels, thousands of acres. The climate mafia was unavailable for comment. So uh, yeah, there you go. Look at all that money flush down the toilet. What are they going to do with all of it? Well, uh, disposing of it's apparently super difficult. It's not environmentally friendly. So they'll probably just bury it and uh, call it a day. Sigma Tiger, all up in your grill. Like and subscribe. 10k likes or subs, whichever happens first. Uh, we're going to go ahead and tear this mask off and reveal the huge monster behind the mask. Sigma Tiger, 
signing off.